This screencast is for the Unit 9 exam for 8th grade social studies. Please use the screencast as a way to um, have a read aloud exam for you. Feel free to listen to it multiple times, start it, end it, anything you need as we go through this. So start by clicking the preview quiz now button, start attempt, and then you'll see what we're doing today. So, question one is our matching with terms. And the first one is U.S. land in present day Oklahoma. So this is on page 332. So go to 332 and take a look. Here's our choices. Is this Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, the Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, the Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? Select your choice after looking on page 332, and then let's go to the next one. Our next question is who ruled that the National Bank was constitu- or what ruled that the National Bank was constitutional? This is on page 330, and your choices are Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren. So you're going to go to page 330 and select what you think made the National Bank constitutional. Our next one, Advance the State's Rights Doctrine, and that is on page 323. Your choices are Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren. So go to page 323, find out who or what advanced the state's rights doctrine. Go ahead and hit that neck, or, and move down to that next question when you're ready. Who led the Seminole against U.S. troops? Page 335. Was it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? So select your choice from what is presented here and go ahead and move down to the next one. What was the forced march to Indian Territory taken by the Cherokee? This is located on page 334. So once you've gone to 334, look for the following. Is it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? Select your choice and then go ahead and move on to the next one, which is also on page 334. What established that only the federal government had authority over the American Indians? Let's look at our choices here. Is it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? So looking at 334, select your choice and get ready to hit that next button. Our next one argued that the United States was one nation, not a pact among independent states. This is on page 328. Looking at your choices, you've got Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren. Select your choice, and when you're ready, move on to the next one. What was the practice of rewarding loyal supporters with government jobs? Page 324. Is it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? Select your choice, and we've got two more matching. Who was one of Andrew Jackson's strongest allies in his official cabinet? Was it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, 
Daniel Webster, McCullough v. Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren. Go ahead and select your choice after looking on page 324. And when you're ready, move on to your last matching section. Great job so far. Who was the Indian leader who decided to fight U.S. officials rather than leave Illinois? This is on page 335. Is it Indian Territory, Osceola, Worcester v. Georgia, Black Hawk, The Trail of Tears, Daniel Webster, McCullough in Maryland, The Spoil System, John C. Calhoun, or Martin Van Buren? Select your choice. Congratulations, you've finished the matching section. Hit the next button when you're ready. Question 2. Nominating conventions contributed to the expansion of democracy in the United States in the 1820s by, go to page 323, A. Drawing media attention to the election, B. Allowing people to become more active in politics, C. Granting women and African Americans the vote, or D. Increasing the presidential candidate's popularity. So select your choice from the answers given here after you've looked on page 323 and hit that next button whenever you're ready. Question 3. What was the spoil system practiced by newly elected President Andrew Jackson? This is on page 324. Is it damaging the reputations of one's political opponents? Is it celebrating one's victory over a period of months? Is it raising the wages of one's staff after a victory? Or is it rewarding supporters by giving them government jobs? Select your choice from the answers given here, and when you're ready, hit that next button. Question 4. What was the main Democratic criticism of John Quincy Adams' candidacy for the presidency? Page 324. Was it because he was crude and hot-tempered? Because he was out of touch with everyday people? Because he was a veteran who was too invested in the military? Or because he was a bad judge of character? Go to page 324 and learn a little bit about John Quincy Adams. Select your choice, and when you're ready, hit the next button. Who was one of Andrew Jackson's strongest allies in his official cabinet? Page 324. Was it A. John C. Calhoun, B. Daniel Webster, C. Martin Van Buren, or D. William Henry Harrison? Select your choice after looking on page 324, and when you're ready, hit that next button. Question 6. Northerners supported tariffs in the early 1800s because tariffs helped them compete with page 326 A. British merchants B. Southern agriculturalists C. British manufacturers or D. Southern manufacturers So go to page 326 and find out why Northerners liked tariffs. When you're ready, hit that next button. Question 7. In the early 1800s, Southerners opposed tariffs because tariffs, pages 326 through 327, A. Decreased the price of goods they needed, B. Angered their European trading partners, C. Benefited only northern merchants, or D. Were higher in the south than in the north and west. So take a look at your choices and find out why Southerners did not like tariffs. When you're ready, click next. Question 8. What effect did the Tariff of Abominations have on Andrew Jackson's America? This is on page 327. Was it because it fostered the nation's hatred of British companies? Was it because it fueled growing sectional differences within the country? Because it helped the West, which did not rely on international trade? Or because it favored the South's agriculture-based economy? So go to page 327 to search for your choice. When you're ready, click that next button. Question 9. Arguments over which issue sparked the nullification crisis? Page 328. Was it states' rights? Was it the tariff of abominations? Was it an economic depression? Or was it bank operations? Go to page 328 to look for your answer, and when you're ready, click Next. Question 10. The nullification crisis was a dispute over the power of the... Page 328 to 329. A. States to secede from the Union. 
B. States to reject unconstitutional federal laws. C. Federal government to end tariffs. Or D. Federal government to favor one region over another. This is pages 328 and 329. You're finding out about the nullification crisis. Question 11. What was Andrew Jackson's view on the Second Bank of the United States? Page 329. So go to 329 and hold. Was it because it should have the power to act exclusively as the federal government's financial agent? Because it should be mostly privately owned but supervised by Congress and the President? Because it was an unconstitutional extension of Congress that should be controlled by the states? Or because it was a welfare agency for wealthy politicians that should have its charter revoked? Question 12. The economic policies adopted by President Jackson before the Panic of 1837, pages 330 to 331, did it A. Decrease inflation, B. Privatize state banks, C. Lower the national debt, or D. Hurt expansion in the West? So what did these economic policies do? When you're ready, click that next button after looking on pages 330 to 331. <sighs> Question 13. In McCullough v. Maryland, the Supreme Court ruled that the, page 330, a. States have more power than the federal government, b. National Bank was constitutional, c. Federal government could forcibly collect taxes, or d. National Bank's charter should be renewed. Select your choice from the answers presented here. After looking on page 330, when you're ready, click the next button. Question 14. The Bureau of Indian Affairs was a, page 332, a congressionally approved office established to protect the ways of Native Americans, b, federal agency created to manage the removal of Native Americans to the West, c, federal agency designed to negotiate with Creek and Chickasaw Indians, or d, group established by the Mississippi Legislature to track Native American deaths. Once you've gone to 332 and discovered what the Bureau of Indian Affairs is, hit the next button. Question 15. What, where was Indian Territory? Page 332. A. East of the Mississippi River. B. South of the Blue Ridge Mountains. C. Present-day Oklahoma. D. Present-day Arkansas. Hit the next button when you found out. Question 16. How did the Cherokee people resist removal to Indian Territory? Was On page 333, was it they adopted the contemporary culture of white Americans? Was it that they traded tribal goods for knives, guns, and other weapons because they brought a case against the federal court or because they published a newspaper? Hit the next button when you're ready. Question 17. What was the spoil system as practiced by President Jackson? Go to 324 to look it up and then construct your answer using complete sentences. Question 18, our final question. What was the Bureau of Indian Affairs? You're constructing your answer using complete sentences after looking it up on page 332. Hit that next button. Scroll to the bottom, hit submit all and finish. Good luck. Remember to watch this as many times as you need.